Hello, and welcome to the first part of this course, What Are Stocks? Before we go into the main meat on how to invest in the stock market, we need to establish what a stock is first. Stocks, also known as shares, are small parts of a company. When a private company floats on a stock market after an IPO, it's divided up into small pieces similar to a pizza. This allows the public, people like you and me, to purchase each piece, a share of the company, and become part owners. The money the company receives will be reinvested back into the business. The number of shares the company offers to the public can actually vary. However, if you were to buy 100% of the shares offered, you would actually be 100% owner of the company. Now we know what a stock is. How can the public, people like you and me, purchase these small pieces of a company. Once a company goes public, the shares are available to buy on the stock market. You can access the stock market through an online broker where you can purchase or sell stocks of your choice. The price of a stock can go up as well as down. So when making a purchase, you need to be confident that the price will go up over a period of time in order for you to make a return. You're not limited on the number of shares you can buy as long as you have enough funds available to cover each transaction. However, to start off with, you shouldn't overexpose yourself and buy too many stocks at one go. You could buy small amounts of stocks first, then watch the stock market's performance, then make a decision whether to buy or sell your stocks moving forward. Now we've covered the basics of what stocks are. Let's look at ETFs. However, before we do, let's have a quick recap on stocks first. A stock is a small piece of a company that's traded on the stock market. When you purchase a stock, you own a small part of the company. If you buy stocks in multiple companies, you own small parts of each company. So let's say you buy one Apple stock, one Apple stock costing $108. Then you were to buy a stock in Facebook for $240. Then you were to buy a stock in Disney for $120. In total, the three stocks you would have bought would have cost you $468. Now let's look at ETFs, Exchange Traded Funds. An ETF is a basket of individual stocks. Not like stocks where you, when you make a purchase, you're only purchasing one stock at a time. An ETF contains multiple companies within one stock that you can actually buy on the stock market. One ETF share would be equivalent to owning small percentages of multiple companies at once. ETFs are ideal for passive investors who don't want to invest in individual stocks at one time. How does this compare to investing in individual stocks? In the example we went through previously, one stock of Apple was $108, one stock of Facebook is $240, and one stock in Disney is $120. So therefore, the free stocks will have cost $468. One ETF stock will be a combination of multiple companies. So instead of buying three individual stocks, that could cost $468. You can buy one ETF that would represent hundreds of companies. This ETF, EQQQ, holds 102 companies. On the right hand side, you can see the top holdings this ETF holds. The price for this stock at this moment of recording is $314. Therefore, that $314 will be divided between all of the stock this ETF holds, 102 in total. So if you look at the first three, Apple, Microsoft and Amazon, 12.38% will go towards Apple, 9.13% will go towards Microsoft, and 8.98% will go towards Amazon. Now, the percentage allocation will be similar for all of the companies within this ETF. Let's look at the pros and cons between ETFs and individual stocks. An ETF is usually used by passive investors, while individual stocks are currently traded by more active investors. Buying one share in an ETF will be equivalent to buying percentages of multiple companies. They can be seen as more secure than buying individual stocks. And you could say less management is required, as ETFs are a basket of shares resembling a portfolio. 
So, if some of the companies go down, some may go up, therefore managing itself automatically. When investing in individual stocks, you're investing in one company at a time. Having a portfolio of individual companies can provide more control than an ETF. With ETFs, you're unable to change the percentage allowance given to each company or opt out of any companies being invested in. This is regardless if one particular company was affecting the overall performance of that ETF. So the question you may be asking, what should you invest in, stocks or ETFs? Well, that really depends on what type of investor you are. Are you a passive investor or an active investor? If you're a passive investor that haven't really got much time to analyze and look into individual companies, an ETF may be for you. However, if you'd want quicker return and to be active on your investments, stocks may be the best way to go. If you want to invest in individual stocks, I would consider investing in stocks and ETFs to have a well diverse balance portfolio. Let's look at the different ways you can actually make money with stocks. One way is when the price goes up from more than what you paid for it. The second is by being paid out dividends, a distribution of the company's profits. So let's look at what happens when the price goes up. Let's say you bought 10 shares in Facebook. Each share is worth $240 each. That's a total investment of $2,400. The share price increases by 20% in six months. Therefore, each share is now worth $288. This gives you a total profit of $48 per share. Let's look at the profit per share and times it by the amount of shares you have. So that's 48 times 10 shares that equals a total profit of $480 within six months. We looked at what happens if the price increases over time, but let's look at it like this. What happens if the price decreases over a period of time? So let's say the price for the stock decreased by 20% over six months. Therefore, the price value will be in total of $192 per share, a loss of $48 per share. In total, for 10 shares, this will be a total loss of $480. However, we may want to look at it slightly differently. As you own the shares, even if the price goes down, you will only lose your investment if you were to cash in. If you are confident that the prices can go back up over a period of time, you could hold on to your shares and wait for the market to increase the price of your stocks. In this example, the price did go up by 25%. Your shares were $192 when it reduced from 20%. Now, your shares will be $252. In total, for 10 shares, that would be $2,520. So, if the price does go down on your stock, you could evaluate the market, identify if there's a bounce, and the price will go back over time and make a decision whether to sell at a lower rate or hold on to your stock and wait for the markets to climb back up. Let's look at dividends. Dividends are a distribution of a company's profits paid out to shareholders. It is paid out to all investors who own stocks in the company. The more stocks you own, the more you will be paid out in dividends. So if a company pays out $1 per share in a year, you will receive 25 cents each quarter. If you own 10 shares, that will be $2.50 each quarter. For the year, that will be $10 paid out in dividends for 10 stocks. If your strategy is to invest for dividends, you will need to know the company's X dividend date and also the payment date. You will need to own the shares before this date to receive payment in the next dividend payout. Payment date. This is the date dividend payments are made to shareholders. Please note, share prices will reduce by the dividend payout amount the next day. So, if the stock price was $240, the price will go down by 25 cents the next day. This will mean the price will become $239.75. One of the questions I get asked the most is, how much money do I need to start investing in the stock market? The answer for this isn't as straightforward as you may think. 
but I'll take you through some examples to give you some indication on how much money you would need to start investing. Ideally, you would need a diverse portfolio or a portfolio to start with. You could say a portfolio can start from anything from two companies that you invested in. The companies that you invested in should be in different industries or have different chart patterns. If all of the companies in your portfolio have similar chart patterns, if the prices fall, all of your investments could fall at the same time. Apple and Facebook stocks are usually traded together within ETFs, therefore share similar trend patterns. If you only invested in Apple and Facebook alone, you could lose money when either of these stock prices falls. On the 15th of October, both Apple and Facebook stock fell by 15%. Therefore, if you only invested in these two companies, you would have made a loss of 15% on both companies. Having a diverse portfolio can protect your account when some of your stock prices fall. In this example, on the 15th of October, Apple stock fell by 15% over 15 days, while Match stock increased by 14%. You can see the benefits from having a diverse portfolio. So let's go back to the original question. How much money do I need to start investing in the stock market? To start off with, you need to invest in three companies at least. A truly diverse portfolio will start from investing in 10 companies. Now, please note that when investing, especially in three companies, that all of those companies that you invest in should have different trend patterns. In this video, I'm going to go over market capitalization, market cap. Understanding the company's market cap will reveal the company's size and can provide an indication on how it performs in the market. Usually, the bigger the market cap, the bigger the company or the greater the company's worth. To work out a company's market cap, you need to multiply the current share price by the total number of outstanding shares. Example, if a company issues 1 million shares and they are trading at $50 a share, its market cap will be 50 million. The formula for this is the price of shares times the number of shares available equals market cap. There are three market cap categories in total small caps, mid caps, and large caps. Let's look at each cap category, small caps. These are companies with a market value of 3 billion or less. These companies are usually young companies or in emerging markets. They can be high risk as they're not established as bigger companies. They haven't reached their full potential. However, with large risks comes large rewards. So, if the company is successful, you can actually capitalize from the growth of this company, but beware, there can be large risks associated to small cap companies. Mid caps. These are companies worth between $3 billion and $10 billion. These are usually established companies that are expecting more growth. They carry less risk than small caps as they're much bigger. Large caps. These are companies worth more than $10 billion. They are well established and usually market leaders within their space. They are less risky than small caps and mid caps. The growth of these companies are usually steady and with good potential to maintain their position. We had a brief look at all market cap sizes, small caps, mid caps and large caps. The strategies that we will go through in this course can be applied to all cap sizes. If this is your first time investing on the stock market, starting off with large caps will be ideal it will help reduce the chances of unexpected changes in the stock prices and can reduce risks. Now we know what a stock is, how can we check if a company we would like to invest in is stable and has potential for growth, allowing us to make a return on our money? When investing in a company in the stock market, you should treat it as if you are buying a whole company. Have you ever watched Dragon's Den or Shark Tank? In these shows, the investors interrogate the business owner to understand how much the company is making in profit in the last three years. We need to think like a dragon or a shark investor and review the financial reports of these companies we're thinking about investing in. Let's review a company's financial statements to see their sales, assets and liabilities as well as their earnings per share. Having an understanding of the company's financial reports will reveal how the company is performing financially and if there is potential growth to come. There are a lot of free resources out there on the internet where you can find information about the company's financial reports. 
These are some of the websites I use to gather my information. BAM, SEC, Morningstar, Yahoo Finance, and MSN Money. For this video, I'm going to use BAM, SEC. Let's go to BAMSEC to see the financial reports for Apple. Within the dashboard, you can see the reports that are available. It has news on or information on the financials, news, prospectuses, regulations, and etc. What we want to look at is actually the 10K reports. The 10K reports is actually the year on year financial reports. You can also review the quarter reports. But let's just jump in into the last, the latest 10K reports. There is a lot of information available, which is fantastic for us to interrogate. However, what we can do, we can actually jump to the relevant sections to reveal the information that we need. So if we do a quick find, and I've got it here already on net sales. Let's have a look at net sales. So let's scroll through to see if we get some financial information on the net sales for Apple. Brilliant, we found something here. Within net sales, we can see how it's performed over the last few years from 2018 all the way up to 2020. It has a breakdown from each of the categories, so iPhone, Macs, iPad, and actually wearables and etc., and also services. The sales of this chart are in million dollars. In 2019, there's a slight dip in $5 million. That can be a bit concerning when reviewing the financial statements for a company. Let's have a look at where this $5 million went. So if you can scroll down to identify a deeper breakdown. We can see something here that there was a reduction in sales in Greater China and also Japan. So this provides some context as why the revenue drops in 2019. You can see that sales went back up in 2020. When looking at this chart, especially for Apple, the most important segment of all is the USA. In 2018, it grew 4%. 2019, 7%. So you can see the growth there. Within Europe, it was minus three, then it went to 14. So you can see there's a lot of potential for this company. Now let's look, have a look at assets and liabilities to see if there's any debt within the business. If I was to pull in assets and liabilities here, see what we can find. Okay, fantastic. The total cash in the bank outweighs the debt. That shows a good indication that the company is stable. If the debt collectors wanted to collect all of their money, Apple has enough money to cover that debt. Another important metric for us to have a look at is EPS, earnings per share. An EPS is the company's net profit divided by the total number of shares outstanding. For Apple, we can see a year on year growth on the EPS. 2016 all the way to 2020. However, there was a slight dip in 2019, but it sure made up for it in 2020. This shows that shareholders will actually make a profit from every share they own for this company. Let's have a recap of what we will look at in the financial report. We will need to see year on year growth on sales, assets, and this could be cash held, that is greater than the total liabilities and the debt that the company has and also a year on year growth on earnings per share. If we can see a consistent growth each year, it is a good possibility that this company is very stable and it will continue to grow in the near future. Similar to reviewing a company's financial reports, a fundamental analysis plays a critical role in identifying stocks that has potential for growth, winning stocks. The list of fundamentals you can use are endless. The key to this is to keep it simple but effective as possible. Over the years, I've found there are four main fundamentals that works. Regardless of what strategy I'm applying, I always include these four in my process. And if needed, I add a few other strategies on top, depending on the results I'm looking for. These four fundamental checks I'm going to share with you today are designed to reduce risk and to provide a return on your investments. Let's dive in. Number one, choosing a large cap company. How much risk are you willing to take? Small caps can provide high returns, but as we discussed in a previous video, small cap companies are still trying to find their feet in the market and can be vulnerable. If this is your first time trading or investing, 
it may be ideal to invest in large caps first. Number two, ensure there is year on year growth. Over a three to five year period, have the sales increased over time? Has the assets increased over time? Has the liabilities and debts gone up or down? You need to make sure they have more money than debts and the EPS is consistently growing over the years. Number three, institutional ownership. Ensure that over 70% of the shares out there are owned by institutions. Institutions are companies that control lots of money. So people that control mutual funds, pension funds, insurance companies and banks, etc. that invest on people's behalf. If they are investing in the company that you're looking into, it's high potential that this company can grow quite quickly. Number four, ensure the average volume of stocks traded each day is over 200,000. Anything lower than 200,000, you could find it difficult to find someone to buy or sell your stocks to. The higher the volume, the better. This means there was lots of people out there who are willing to buy or sell your stocks. So if you wanted to sell your stocks at a later date, it wouldn't be difficult at all because someone out there will be willing to buy it from you. You may be thinking, this is good information, but how and where can I find this? How long would it take me? Well, if that's what you're thinking, not to worry. There are lots of free tools out there that will do the hard work for you. One of the tools I use is Finviz. It's a free stock screener tool. Let me show you how to use it. So let's jump straight into Finviz. So Finviz is a website that has a lot of information that investors can review to make decisions whether to invest or not in a particular company. The homepage you can see here has a lot of information, but we don't want to have a look at this today. Let's just go straight into the screener section. On landing on the screener section, the results show over 7,000 companies that is being pulled up. We want to filter this down to make sure that we can find stocks that have high potential for growth and also have been growing year on year in the previous years. So let's open up the filter section and let's reveal how many things we can actually filter for. There's quite a lot of information here we can filter for, but we just want to make this specific and find stocks that have been growing on year on year with an EPS growth over 15%. So let's identify the market cap we want to filter this for. So a large market cap over 10 billion. You can see that's already reduced the number of companies to um, 839. That's fantastic. The EPS growth over the last five years, we want that to be over 15%. This shows that a steady growth after the last five years have been over 15%, this is good. EPS growth for the next five years is predicted to be again over 15%. The average volume that the company is trading at, so the amount of people are buying and selling the stock on a daily basis, we want that to be anything over 200,000 people per day. Now, what is the EPS growth for this year? Again, let's set this to 15%, over 15%. And what's the predicted EPS growth for the next year to come? Let's make that again, 15%. Now, from over 7,000 um, companies that came up in the results when we first landed on this page, we now have 30 companies. So that's actually reduced it for a great deal. It's still quite a bit of companies for us to review. So let's kind of filter this a bit more so we can actually get the best of this bunch. Institutional ownership. So that's pretty important. So what's the percentage of the ownership of these companies that have been invested by institutions? So we wanna have a look at companies that have over 70% of their investments are made by institutions. Okay, so that's given us a result of 23. Let's have a look at these results. You can see the cap here, the industry, the country. Now, depending on what country you are, you reside in, you may want to look at companies just within your country, or I like to have a look at companies 
that are sitting in one country at a time. So if I was to pull this report, I would look at companies just within the USA, or I might, I'm based in, in, in the UK, but I may want to look at companies that are just in the UK. Let's have a look at the next screen. So a lot of these companies are based in the USA. So let's just filter this down to American companies only. And now we have a total results of 17. I would say this is a decent amount of companies we can actually investigate and look into. So let's review the results here. We have the ticker. So the ticker is a code that's applied for every company. When you're looking for information about a particular company in the stock market, you need to know the company's ticker. If the ticker is incorrect, you can actually buy stock in the wrong company. So it's very, very important you have the right ticker. The sector, this is for you to know what sector the company is in and the industry. If you are familiar what industry you want to invest in, you can actually go in to the filter section and filter out a particular industry of your liking and then apply other filters for that as well. But for this video, I'm not going to do that. I want to have a look at all of the companies across all industries and find out which ones will give us the best return. The results have given us 17 companies that meet our criteria. So let's have a recap what we filtered for. Companies that have a large market cap over 10 billion. Companies that have had an EPS growth over 15% for the last five years. It's predicted to have an EPS growth over 15% for the next five years to come. The average volume of people trading each of these companies on a daily basis is over 200,000. The EPS growth for the current year is over 15%. It's predicted to have another EPS growth over 15% in the next year. And institutional ownership is over 70%. And also we filtered just for the USA companies. We can actually filter the results by price. So it gives us an indication to see how much these company stocks are worth. And it goes from, you can filter it from the, the lowest all the way to the highest. And you can see if there's any correlation between the, the price of the stock and the market cap. The results from this filtered search show that companies are performing very well on a year-on-year -year basis and actually predicted to continue to grow in the next five years or so. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're always trending upwards on the charts. Charts can actually show different signs. So we want to have a look at the charts to see if their prices are growing up on a year-on-year -year basis. And for companies that we can see that it's a consistent growth for each year, we want to make a note of these and then investigate them more on a charting tool. Let's go through to see which ones have a consistent growth. This one here, it has, it's not growing consistently over the period of time. So let's leave that one alone. Nor is this one. This one here, you can see that it's been growing consistently. It doesn't show you the full um, time period for this particular company. Um, but I'm going to make a note of this and we're going to review the, the chart in another tool. Let's make a note of that one there. So there's FND. This one here, PTC. Again, consistently growing year on year. So if we wanted to invest any at any point in this company um, on this chart, so if you was to invest in April or you was to invest in June or even in August, and um, by the end of the, the year, um, we would have made a profit. So let's make a note of that one there as well. Again, with um, PCTY, that's going up consistently. So is this one, ENPH. This one's going down, so let's leave that one alone. PayPal, it is growing. I'm gonna make a note of that one. You can see here, it's it goes, sideways um, a little bit in the middle um, but then it starts to pick up again we want to dive into that to see how that's performing on a chart tin tool sq again that's going up oled again that's going up and this one here sbac 
that's going sideways and this one here ADSK that is going up but you can see that it has gone sideways for a lot of the time on this chart so we're going to leave that one put that one to one side let's have a look at the next page again sideways Netflix sideways now yes that's been going up consistently and CHTR again that has been going up and EQIX that's been going down so in total we have let's look at my let's bring up my notes in front of you here so we have in total eight companies that we want to investigate and have a look at the charts to see how these are performed on a year-on-year -year basis. Let's have a look at the companies we're filtered for here. We're filtered for the companies that have the best performing EPS growth for the next five years, which is over 15%. Let's have a recap of what we filtered for. We chose companies that had a market cap over 10 billion, we ensured there was year-on-year -year growth in the EPS. Institutional ownership was over 70% and the average volume of stocks traded per day was over 200,000. Remember, for each of these companies, you should double check the financial reports to make sure that there's consistent growth. Now we've conducted our fundamental analysis, we need to perform a technical analysis for these companies to see how the stock prices move over time. This will identify if there are any opportunities for us to make money from these companies. The tool I use to perform technical analysis is called TradingView. In the next video, I will take you through this platform and show you how to perform a technical analysis. A technical analysis evaluates investments to identify if there are price trends and patterns in charts. This involves reviewing price changes and trading activities. If there are obvious patterns in the charts, there is a high possibility that the pattern will repeat itself, allowing us to second guess what it's going to do next. This allows us to make a decision whether to invest or not. A technical analysis can reveal if a company has a strong price trend, but does not take any financial fundamentals into account. Therefore, you shouldn't rely on technical analysis alone. Once a company has passed your fundamental checks, you can go ahead and run through a technical analysis on the company so you can be confident that you will be able to make a return on your investments. There are typically three chart patterns you should look out for. One, when the price is going up. How long has it been going up for? Is it consistent? Does it go up, down, up, down, but every time it goes up, it goes back up higher than it was before? If this is the case, we call these higher highs. I'll explain more about higher highs later on. Two, sideways. Does the price go sideways, go up and down, up and down in a sideways motion, not actually creating the momentum? Or three, the price goes down. You can make money in all three of these patterns, but in this training course, I'm going to cover how to invest in companies in an upwards trend. Regardless of a trend direction, up, sideways or down, a good chart pattern will have support and resistance lines. In general, each time the price meets one of these lines, the price will revert in the opposite direction. Support and resistance lines can identify when it's the right time to buy a stock. If the price is on a support line, it can go up and this is where we would want to capitalize. Here are some examples of different chart trends, up, sideways and down. In upward trend, you can see the price starts from $50 and goes up to 100. So from 50 to 90, down to 75, up to 125, but back down to 100. Now, you can probably guess that the next trend or the next price will actually be up somewhere around here, which is about hundred and fifty dollars in a sideways trend you can see the price starts at 50 goes up to 100 back down to 50 up to 100 
back down to 50. So if we were to invest here at $50, at the end of this duration, to say this is six months, you still will be at $50. If you were to compare this to the upward trend and you were to invest in a share price at $50, and in six months time, you were to come out, you would be you were to come out at $100 here. Now, the downwards trend. It starts here at $100, and it goes up slightly, 125, back down to 75, up to 90, and down again to 50. What we wanna do is actually identify charts that have a upwards trend that are consistently going up and identify when is it the right time to buy. So I have a question. Out of these two lines for each of these charts, so the bottom one here, top one here, the bottom one here, the top one here, the bottom one here, the top one here, which line would you want to invest in first? Would you want to invest here at $50? Or would you want to start your investment here in upward trend at $90? Or would you want to start here at $50 at the bottom line? Or would you want to start your investment here at $100 at the top line? With the downward trend, it wouldn't be ideal to invest in this stock at all because the price is consistently going down. However, in general, the bottom lines on these charts are called the support lines and will have the lowest price in this trend. Therefore, it's ideal to buy when the price hits the support line. To make it easier, I've color coded a support and resistant line for you here. The support line is red, resistant line here is green. Throughout this video, I will refer to the support line in red and the resistant line in green. If you're having difficulties understanding what support and resistant lines are, you can look at it like having multiple floors in a house. The support line acts as the floor and the resistant line acts as the ceiling. So on the first floor here, you can see that the price starts at the support line. It hits the ceiling of the first floor, goes back to the floor, hits the ceiling, goes back to the floor, hits the ceiling and then breaks through the ceiling and goes onto the second floor. Then hits the ceiling of the second floor, hits the floor of the second floor, back to the ceiling, back to the floor, back to the ceiling, back to the floor, then breaks through the ceiling and enters into the third floor. Down, it hits the ceiling of the third floor, the floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, but breaks through the floor again and enters back into the second floor. And then it makes a massive leap through the third floor, floor, the support line, and actually straight through the third floor ceiling resistance line and goes straight out of the roof. In this case, it will be onto the fourth floor. Now that we have identified what support and resistant lines are, what does it mean when the prices touches each of these lines? In this diagram here, we can see the price starts at the support line, goes up to resistance, back to support, up to resistance, and it stops at support. Now, anytime it touches the support line, we can see from previous history, that the price has always gone back up to resistance. So therefore, it's a good time to buy when the price hits a support line. Looking at the previous trend, we can anticipate that the price will actually increase and go back up to the resistance line here. So you could say that when the price hits the resistance line, it's an indicator that we should wait because the price could actually reduce and fall back and go back onto the support line here. So. When it hits a support line, it's a buying opportunity. When it hits the resistance line, it's a waiting opportunity. The price can break through the resistance line and go back up into another floor, what we've identified in the previous slide, but it can fall, repeat in previous history and fall back on the support. Now, even if we were to buy here on the support line and it goes up, down, up, down, over a matter of time, 
the price will increase and move upwards on the support line here. Now, if we were to buy here on the support line, again, it could go back up to resistance line and break through and follow another trend. Anytime a price actually comes out of this trend, so it comes out of the trend between the support line and the resistance line, a new trend has formed and we need to wait and see what the new trend will look like. Just because the trend is actually going upwards, it doesn't mean that it can have a reversal. It can hit the resistance line, hit the support line and break through the support line and actually trend downwards. Let's see what a support and resistance lines look like on an actual chart. Here you can see the support and resistance line drawn out on the chart. You can see it follows a similar trend. The price hits a support, goes up to resistance, back to support, hits resistance but breaks through slightly, comes back, doesn't really touch the support line, but goes back to resistance and again support. And we can anticipate that the price will go up and hit the resistance line again. So what does it mean for us to place a trade? The green dots represent opportunities for us to make a trade or to buy some shares in this company. Now we know what support and resistance lines are. Let's plot this out on a charting tool using TradingView. Open up your browser and type in tradingview.com. You'll be taken to this website here. TradingView is an online platform that allows you to analyze stocks using charts. You can plot support and resistance lines, make annotations, and create watch lists to see how companies perform over time. It's completely free to use, but has a paid option if you require more advanced features. For a lot of people, the free version is more than adequate to get started. TradingView offers much more than just its charting tool. As you can see from the options available here. But for this video, we'll only be looking at the charting functionality. Let's click on charts to get started. Now we're in the charts section of TradingView. Let's have a quick look around to see what features it provides before we dive in and start to analyze charts. At the top here, you can see the ticker. That's the ticker of the company which chart we are looking at. You can change this ticker on the name of the company by clicking into it and selecting the ticker in here. So let me put in Apple. It's Apple ticker, click on that. And you can see the chart changes and shows me Apple's performance. Over here on the right hand side, it has a watch list. So if I wanted to save this uh, company so I can go back to it at a later date, I can right click and click on add to watch list. And you can see that Apple will appear within my watch list. I've saved quite a few companies here in my watch list, which we'll go through later. And these are some of the companies that we found when we're using the screen at all, Finviz. You can also see it has the company's information. So the sector of the company, the price, um, how much it's up or down by from the previous day, and key information, the volume, and um, average volume, etc. So over on the left hand side, it has um, the main features that we'll be looking at today. It has the trend line tool, it has different types of trend line tools we can have a look at. So the main ones we're going to have a look at is a trend line and horizontal lines. And it also has various other things as well, which I'm not going to go into in this video. It also has a text option here, so you can have some call outs on the charts. So if you have an, an opinion about how the chart is going to perform, you can make some annotations on the chart. So when you go back to it, you know what your train of thought was at that particular time. At the bottom here, it has the time period and you can auto select the time period you want to look at. So we're looking at Apple, so we can click on all to see what the trend was all time. So we can 
reduced it down and it goes back all the way to 1980 up to where we are now and 2021 if we wanted to limit this we can click on a five-year chart you can see the five years last year year to date six months three months one month five days one day let's have a look at one year so that shows us what the performance has been over one year period at the top here we can actually select the view in days minutes hours and even in ranges i like to leave it on a one day basis so each of these candles represents one day if we were to look at a week each of these candles will represent one week and a candle let's just increase it a little bit more let me click on the magnifying tool that's a bit too much there we go. so a candle represents people buying and selling the stock on a particular time period in this time period we're looking at is one week usually when the stock is going up when the prices are going up the candle is usually green however you can change these colors on different charts when the stock price is going down the candle is usually red here more about candles in a later video let's just revert back and zoom back out and put it to a one year period fantastic now we've had a quick overview on how to use trading view let's jump in and plot some support and resistant lines I'm just going to open up this view to maximize the screen before i do that let's select netflix here and maximize the screen so we look at netflix and it'd be good to identify the trend over a five year period. Let's see what that looks like here. So I wanna draw some support and resistant lines. So use a trend tool and I'm going to draw a line here. What we're gonna do is we wanna find at least when the, the bottom point here meets three at least three times so is there much resistance here or support so look here okay so you can say we have a support line here you can see it touches it once there not quite there twice third time but it breaks through support goes back up and hits the support line again it's failed to meet the support line again back here so it's in this current trend so it can actually dip back down and hit that support line mind you this is over a five-year period so the first trend we're looking at is 2017 it's a pretty long trend to be looking at to see what the price will be in today's current market but this is just an example on how to plot support and resistant lines now let's plot the resistant line change this color to green excellent and we want to find resist when the the price meets the resistance line at least three times as well or as many times as possible so we've got it once there two three and four there but you may want to drop it down to see what the last that's the last point okay so within this time period and um, we'll uh, plot a a vertical line here and we probably can plot a vertical line let's box this in okay so look at this time period from 
2017 to Jan 2021. How much has this gone up over this period? If you wanted to see that, you can use this tool to see what the percentage growth has been. So from 2017, 2021, Netflix has grown 279.38%. Get rid of that. So what's the percentage of growth you can expect from the support line and the resistant line? So let's click back on to this tool here. And we can go up and it's an averaging about 96% there. That was back in, that's back in 2019. And we can, in the current time period, it's 58.45%. Now, potentially this can drop back down all the way to the support line. So what would that drop be? Let's revert this and increase this a bit. What would that drop be? That drop would be minus, we could say about 30%. So in theory, Netflix can drop 30%. There's a potential we can drop 30%. However, this time period that we're looking at is a pretty long time period. And this trend is probably not actually relevant anymore because we can see here, move this out of the way, in July 2020, all the way to January 2021, the trend has changed a lot from the last few years. So this is the time period we should be looking at. So we can actually zoom in to remove these lines and let's have a look at a year trend okay so it looks a bit more it looks a lot different now so we reduce the time period we can plot that you can create another trend line here Going to reduce this it's a bit long. Open that a bit as well. So before, when we was looking at a trend line, a support and resistant line from 2017 and and further back, you can see that the the prices was literally going up over that time. Now we've zoomed in and looking at a smaller time frame. It's not actually going up, it's moving quite sideways. So we can start looking at it as a sideways pattern. Let's draw these lines. It's a bit more accurate. Let's get some lines in. Top one there. Let me change that color to red so so support. <coughs> move this out of the way. Probably get rid of it to be honest with you. So what does this look like? So you can see the support line, resistant line, and how how does it interact with the support resistant line? So it breaks through to the new support line, hits resistance, back to support. I can probably move this down about here. Here's a support line doesn't really go back to resistance, support, resistance, support, resistance. So you can see that it's a sideways motion. Now, this candle here doesn't exactly touch the resistance line. So we can probably bring it down. It's probably a new trend is forming. Okay. So what does this trend and this support and resistance line tell us? It tells us that potentially, Following the previous pattern from July 2020, the price can potentially drop down to support line. 
and this price here is a hundred is four hundred and four hundred and seventy thirteen. A nice tool that we can also or functionality we can look at is the price labeling. So you can just snapshot what the price is here. The price is there. What the price is. <clears throat> so you can see on it's moving sideways. So in 2020 in July, it was 470 and it's potentially can actually reach back to that price that it was in 2020 okay so this is a sideways pattern what we could do we can actually uh, put this on our watch list and actually watch to see if the price is going to hit the support line potentially it can go upwards in an upwards direction and go back and hit the resistance line and therefore it will give you an increase of 16%. So between the support and the resistant line, there is a 16% difference. If we were to wait till the price hits this support line here, it could grow 16% back up to the resistance and hopefully continue to grow. This will be a stock that I will definitely have on my watch list to watch the direction of where the price goes.